Hey everyone, I'm Sam Gross from electricbikereport.com and this, this is a 2002 Gary Fisher Wahoo. And two decades ago, this would have been a pretty good entry-level mountain bike, but today, two decades later, it's a little clapped out. But this video is not about this old mountain bike. It's actually about its front wheel, specifically the Smart Bike Wheel Electric Bike Conversion Kit. Smart Bike Wheel is a relatively low budget e-bike conversion kit and the real remarkable thing about it is at its most basic level this is it. It's just a wheel. Inside this oversized hub shell is a 250 watt hub drive motor and a 313 watt hour battery so 36 volt 8.7 amp hour all crammed into this little hub. In addition to that it's got a gyroscope and a tachometer and those two sensors just them, there's no cadence sensor, no external sensor on this bike. Those two things can figure out what the bike needs to be doing by understanding what pitch the bike is at. So whether or not it's on a flat road, an uphill, or on a downhill, or whether it's accelerating or decelerating. It can use all those different metrics and figure out what the bike needs to be doing. In addition to that, this wheel is going to fit on most any bike you can find. It's got a very generic hub spacing, so 100 millimeters wide, which is going to fit most of your commuter bikes, most of your budget bikes, most any older bike. It can also have a disc brake on it. This is a uh, V-brake mountain bike, so we have the disc brake off, but it does come with a 160 millimeter disc brake rotor that bolts onto that oversized hub shell. But it's going to fit a lot of different types of bikes, and that is not to say you shouldn't check Smart Bike Wheel on their website has a nice template that's gonna kinda of help you figure out whether or not it'll fit the bike you have. But 100 millimeter hub spacing is really what you're gonna find on most of your entry level mountain bikes. So I used to sell bikes for a living and a lot of your kind of cheaper bikes, your hybrid bikes, your touring bikes, a lot of the bikes that you very likely have sitting in your garage, you're gonna be able to fit this. And in addition to that hub spacing, Smart Bike Wheel will lace their hub into a bunch of different rim sizes. So all the way from a 700C road bike wheel or a 29er mountain bike wheel, all the way down to a tiny little 16 inch wheel. And that, that's a custom order, but you can get it done. So more likely, more likely than not, this thing's gonna fit your bike. So when we got the Smart Bike Wheel, no one at the Electric Bike Report office had a good donor bike that we could test it on. So, I took the company credit card, had a $100 budget, went to our local bicycle nonprofit, the St. George Bicycle Collective, and picked up this for $100. And I chose this two decade old bike for a very specific reason. As I'd mentioned before, this was 20 years ago, a very good and even a pretty cool entry level mountain bike. It's a Gary Fisher, it's a Wahoo. Anyone who's been around in the mountain biking world for a while has probably heard of Gary Fisher and his Wahoo, but it's a little clapped out for a mountain bike. It's not gonna work very, very well on the trails. The drivetrain is old, the fork is a little blown out, all of those different things. But for $100, this is a spectacularly capable commuter bike. It's gonna be reliable, it's gonna ride well, it's gonna be efficient pedaling, and with the addition of this wheel, which I think normally is priced right around $500, but I have seen it cheaper than that, this is a remarkably cheap e-bike. At Electric Bike Report, we spend a lot of time talking about how right around the $1,000 mark is kind of your entry-level price point. That is your most basic, capable e-bike. But those bikes are kind of limited. They're typically city bikes, they typically look like track bikes, which means they're gonna be bent over and a little bit more aggressive, and they're almost always gonna have only one gear. This thing costs about half of what one of those bikes would cost, and not only does it have a full Shimano drivetrain, it's got a fork, it's got a little bit more of a relaxed geometry, and it has tires and a build that is going to be capable on more than just pavement. If I was gonna pick a commuter bike for less than $1,000, this is honestly an awesome option. Keep in mind that is going to change depending on what bike you choose. If you put it on a beach cruiser, it's gonna be a little bit of a different experience than what I just described, and I think it'd be awesome on a beach cruiser. But for our purposes, what I envision this wheel working for, this was a great choice. 
but moving on from my love affair with this 20-year-old mountain bike. So normally, if you're familiar with our channel, we usually run our test bikes through a whole gauntlet of tests that include braking and handling tests and things like that, but because this is just a wheel, we're gonna skip those things for this video because as I've mentioned before, how this thing handles is gonna be really dependent on what bike you choose to put it on. But there is a little bit to say about how this thing changes the handling characteristics of a bike because you are adding quite a bit of weight up to the front end and onto the steering. And it's something that I had in mind certainly before I rode this for the first time, but I was really pleasantly surprised that it didn't affect the handling too much. You do have a little bit of a slower steering sensation, something that I adapted to very quickly, but you don't have like a floppy sensation, the wheel doesn't get away from you. And oddly enough, I used to drive a front wheel drive car and I had a question on whether the front wheel drive hub was going to give you any sort of like torque steer under hard acceleration. It doesn't do anything like that. I'm not sure it ever really would. I don't fully understand the engineering behind torque steering, but I do know it's a sensation that happens with some front wheel drive vehicles. This bike does not have that. Again, keep in mind that a lot of the handling is gonna be determined by what bike you choose. This bike handles really nicely with it. I mean, if you try to hop it up a curb or something like that, you're certainly gonna feel the weight. But if you're keeping both wheels on the ground, riding this as a commuter or a very light off-road bike, it does fine. So while we are going to skip any sort of braking or handling test, we are gonna put this wheel to the test on a hill test, a circuit test, and a range test to determine exactly how this conversion kit performs in the real world. In addition to that, we're also filming a second video that shows the installation process because while Smart Bike Wheel does claim it's a three minute install, I'm an experienced mechanic and I found it took a little bit longer than that, mostly because every bike is different and you've got to kind of play with the spacers to make sure it fits correctly. So check out the link in the description below to that additional video if you're curious on how to install this, this, this conversion kit. So to test how the smart bike wheel climbs, we've brought the wheel and our two decade old donor bike out to our test hill that is lovingly called Hell Hole. So this hill is a third of a mile long. It's about a 12% grade on average. So it's a fairly substantial hill, especially considering that this is a commuter bike, even though in a past life it was a mountain bike, this is designed to be a commuter. This is a pretty substantial hill for it. It will be steep. So there's two things I want you to keep in mind while you're watching this video. The first one is that this is a 250 watt hub motor. So that's fairly modest in size. So while I would expect this bike to make it up the hill, it's not gonna be a particularly stellar time, but it should make it up just fine. And the second thing is, this is just a wheel that we are testing in that you are going to see a different result on how the bike will climb based on the bike that you choose to put the wheel on. This is a mountain bike, and despite the fact that it is two decades old, it's gonna probably climb better than, say, a beach cruiser. So depending on the bike you choose, you're gonna get a different result. But again, I expect this wheel to do just fine. Let's see how it does. So I feel like I'm always saying this, especially with our kind of more modestly powered e-bikes, but I'm really impressed with how the smart bike wheel made it up our test hill. It came up with a average speed of 8.2 miles an hour in two minutes and 13 seconds, which considering this is just a 250 watt front hub motor, that's pretty impressive. So kind of touching on handling really quick, the fact that it's a front hub motor does give it a little bit of a unique handling characteristic and it's not, Definitely not a bad thing, and it's really pronounced on hills. I can't quite put a finger on what's different between the front hub motor and the rear hub motor, but I guess it gives it this, this sensation that it's kind of like trying to claw its way up the hill instead of push. It, it pulls you along instead of pushing, and that gives it a little bit of a different ride feel going uphill, and it's not a bad one at all. It's, it's actually quite satisfying. But again, 
I'm really impressed with how this budget wheel made it up the hill. Two minutes and 13 seconds is a great result, especially considering the grade of this hill and that it is probably steeper than most any hill you'd run into in a city or an urban center or really anywhere this bike is made to be ridden. But again, great result from the smart bike wheel. So unlike a lot of the more entry level or budget, think $2,000 and under e-bikes that we test, this bike has no sort of sensor that's gonna tell the power to turn off when you hit the brakes. Instead, what it does is it's got that tachometer in there, which is gonna be able to detect acceleration and more importantly for braking, deceleration. So when you pull on the brakes, it's going to be able to detect that the revolutions are rapidly reducing, you're decelerating and it needs to cut off the power. You might get a little bit of a sensation that you're dragging the brake against the force of the motor. I've never once had it feel like it was overpowering the brakes and it never takes more than just a few seconds for the motor to turn off. And when you begin pedaling, especially from a stop is where I really find it remarkable, is it reacts very, very quickly. It knows almost immediately, immediately that you are pedaling. Same thing on a hill. It'll give you kind of a gentle push on flats, but as soon as the hill rises, it's gonna roll on the power a little bit more aggressively. One thing to note about all of these features, all of these spectacular claims that I'm making about how all this thing works, is you have to calibrate the gyroscope inside the wheel every time you ride the bike. First thing you do. How you do that is through an app. While I had mentioned before there is no display on this bike, there is a really nicely designed app that you can load onto your smartphone. And in fact, you have to load it on your smartphone. It's kind of like the brain of this whole thing. It's how you tell it what you need it to do. And you can use it as a display. It's got speed on there. It's got your battery life on there. It's got your distance traveled, all the things that you'd expect from a normal display. But it also has a really easy to use setting function where you can, one, more importantly, calibrate the gyroscope and you can also adjust your maximum speed. We have this bike currently set up as a class one e-bike. Um, limited to 20 miles an hour, and I did that purposefully because this is a 20-year-old bike and that's where I felt comfortable riding it, but it can go all the way up to 20 miles an hour, so a class three speed setting. And if you have the thumb throttle, if you do choose to upgrade to that option, it will be a class two e-bike as well. So in the circuit test, which is where we test our bikes around the closest thing we have to a closed circuit, it's about a one mile loop, there's four corners, no stop signs, in that test, this bike did really, really well. And what that test tells us is it gives us an idea of the performance at each of the different pedal assist levels, which in this case, there are four of them, in addition to how it pedals with no motor assistance. And then it also gives us a really good idea of kind of its maximum average speed and things like that. And as I mentioned before, I'm testing this bike as a class one, so limited to 20 miles an hour. And keep in mind, you can change it to a class three, 28 miles an hour, or if you upgrade to a throttle, it can be a class two. But I've kept this bike at a class one because the specific bicycle that I've chosen to put this wheel on, I'm not really comfortable riding it any faster than 20 miles an hour. Two decades old is, is a little too fast to be cornering over 20. But in our circuit test, it performed really, really well. On average, between all of the different PAS levels, we saw a jump of about 1.3 miles an hour. So you're getting a really nice differentiation between all of your different speeds and all of your different power levels. With no pedal assistance, it made it around our course with an average speed of about 12 and a half miles an hour. So, you know, again, that's really dependent on the bike that we're choosing. And then at the maximum speed, keep in mind it was a class one, it clocked just under 18 miles an hour. So a respectable result from a class one e-bike and really on par with all of the other class one e-bikes we've tested so far. As I'd mentioned before, right now, how we have this test bike set up, it's just the wheel, just the gyroscope and the tachometer, but you can choose to add some optional upgrades, including a display, a thumb throttle, and a cadence sensor. So those things aren't gonna dramatically change your experience on the bike, maybe the display and the throttle if you really want a bike with the throttle, but the cadence sensor is gonna make the responsiveness of the wheel a little bit more crisp, a little bit more reactive. That being said, the gyroscope and the tachometer do a spectacular job on their own. I never once felt like I was forcing the wheel to work or needed to like remind it to function. There was a few small moments where when I was riding on a perfectly pancake flat road for a prolonged period of time, the motor would shut off it kind of felt like, you know, when you're watching Netflix or binge watching it and that little screen pops up with the, are you still watching question and you have to hit play. It's kind of like the motor was asking that. It just needed a little bit of input from you to know what it needed to keep, keep doing. So considering that 
everything, including the 313 watt hour batteries crammed into that oversized hub shell, the range this thing got is really remarkable. We do two range tests on our bikes, one at the maximum assist level, so PAS4 in this instance, and then one at the lowest assist level, which is PAS1. And on the max assist level, it went 23.47 miles, which is quite a lot for that small of a battery. And the really, really stellar result is the PAS1 test, so our long range, real world range test, where it went 54.47 miles. That is crazy considering that the battery and the motor and the sensors are all inside that little hub, which I guess it's not that little, but all things considered, especially when you think of a normal e-bike where the battery is usually somewhere in the frame and it's got sensors everywhere, that's incredible. So if you're using this thing as a low budget commuter, which I personally think this wheel is perfect for, you should never be worried about how far you're gonna ride that bike and you should really never be worried about using the maximum assist level, which is pretty good. So here at Electric Bike Report, we spent most, if not all of our time, testing full e-bikes. So an e-bike that comes as a complete package with wheels and derailleurs and a frame and a battery mounted to that frame and a, a motor either in the bottom bracket or the rear wheel. So when we got the smart bike wheel, I really tamped down my expectations because how can you expect such a compact package to produce really good performance? You know, I, I thought maybe we would get some modest results, but it may go without saying, we got some really exceptional results that compare to a normal e-bike, a full-size e-bike, especially in the department of range. So a 54 mile on the lowest assist setting or a 23 mile on the highest assist setting battery life is phenomenal, even when compared to a normal e-bike. But in addition to this thing's performance, which was stellar, in addition to that, the thing that has me so enamored with the smart bike wheel is how it works as an alternative, alternative transportation solution and how cheap and affordable and accessible it is. So I come from a very sporting specific background of bicycling with racing and speed and we really wanted our bikes to perform and be fast and fun. Whereas this is really looking at e-bikes through the lens of transportation, which in reality is going to be where e-bikes dominate in the future. This bike is not only affordable, it is accessible. It is something that can be adapted onto almost any style of bike that is on the market today, barring some of those weird hub spacings on performance bikes. But it is an awesome way to get into the world of e-bikes. Whether you are looking for a low budget commuter, whether you're looking to make that bike that's been sitting in your garage an e-bike and give it a second life, or maybe you just want to make your beach cruiser a little bit more capable and a little bit easier to ride when going from your house to the beach and back. This is an awesome option for all of those. And I can't stress it how low of an entry level cost that is. We really do genuinely believe that if you're looking at a full e-bike with everything included, $1,000 is kind of your minimum price point for what is gonna get you the most bang for your buck and not just fall apart as soon as you get on it. But this is half of that, maybe. It is substantially less. So when looking at this through a lens of transportation, this makes e-bikes so much more accessible to so many different types of people with different background. And it makes me really excited. I am kind of enamored with this thing. Not to mention we got to bolt it on to really what is a cool vintage mountain bike. So if you're a person who's looking to give that bike that's been collecting dust in your garage for years a second life as an electric bike, or if you're someone who needs a way to get around town on a reliable and low budget e-bike, the Smart Bike Wheel is a really awesome option for both of those scenarios. If you've liked this review, be sure to give us a like and leave us a comment on what you think about the Smart Bike Wheel and let us know of any other conversion kits that we should keep our eye on because these are all really, really cool things. Additionally, if you wanna know how to install this wheel, there's a link to another video which we're gonna show you how to put it on in the description below. And also there's a link to an in-depth written review that's got a little bit more information about the performance and the specs of the Smart Bike Wheel. For Electric Bike Report, I'm Sam Gross. Thanks for watching.